Anytime government gets involved in the real estate market, there's concern that it could have an adverse effect. We've got a panel that we brought together to discuss what we've heard today in Toronto. Joining us from Toronto, we've got Sean Ziegelstein. He is a real estate agent with Royal LePage here in studio. And in Vancouver, we've got Reese Kesselman, a professor at the School of Public Policy at Simon Fraser University. And maybe if I can start with you, Sean, the issue here we heard from uh, Ontario's Finance Minister, Charles Souza, talking about in the days to come, there'll be some action plan that's going to be presented. So we're not exactly sure what this means here. What do you think needs to be done to deal with this housing crisis? Well, I think they don't know what's going to be happening mm. as of yet. You know, they, I just, just watched in the press conference in the green room and they basically said, you know, we're going to look at all the data. We're going to look at the analytics. We're going to break it down and we're going to say, what do we need to do that we think may help slow down the market a little bit? Unfortunately, they don't know yet exactly what the right move is to do to put that in place to actually make something happen, make it slow down considerably that some of these buyers can get into the marketplace. What do you think makes sense, though? What would you like to see from your perspective? Here? Again, you know, I, I think it's a wait and see approach because I believe that the market is the market and the market has taken a long time to get to this point. And while it is booming right now and we expect no slowdown in sight, we will see a little bit more inventory coming out. We are seeing the spring market taking place. We are seeing uh, houses not selling in multiple offers as much as they were we're not selling, seeing you know, 30 40% growth uh, month over month like we, we had a couple of instances a couple of months ago. So I think we are going to start to see a little bit of that, a little bit of inventory coming out. may help slow the market down a little bit on its own. All right, let's bring in Reese to the conversation. Reese, as you know well, this is something that uh, British Columbia went through uh, and the government got involved in the province to try and deal with the issue in the Vancouver housing market. Uh, what are you uh, looking at here? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? I think the measures taken so far by the BC government, that is the surtax on purchases by foreigners, and by the city of Vancouver, that is uh, empty homes tax, neither of them are going to the fundamental heart of the problem. They are at best stopgap measures, and simply slowing down a bit the rate of increase, which uh, your other guest was mentioning, and many out there are saying is our goal, really cannot be the goal. The goal must be to get housing prices for purchase and to restore rents to an appropriate uh, range where they are affordable by average middle income and even above middle income uh, families, and they're not. So we're, we're, we really need to address the speculative demand for housing. We hear repeatedly that it is a lack of supply. Well, the evidence doesn't bear that out. Speculative demand is not only foreigners, it's domestic speculators, and in fact, anyone buying in this market in Toronto or Vancouver areas, they could only do so with a speculative anticipation of fast ongoing price increases. Otherwise, the prices don't make sense. All right, so let me bring you back into the conversation, Sean. You know, some of the options, of course, include things like a foreign buyer's tax, taxing vacant homes, and the list goes on and on, uh, taxing people who flip properties as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think those would do to the Toronto market? I don't know if they're going to really decrease the prices as much as, as Reese is suggesting. I, I think that what we're seeing is a marketplace that the government is still working on the numbers. They're, they're looking at these numbers to say how many of these people are actually flipping, are actually speculating, both in Toronto, um, in outlying areas as well. I think what we're finding is a lot of the people that are out there are moving into houses and seeing houses that they want to be in. They want to live in, they want to move their families in. We have lots of immigration that's coming into the area, and we're still a desirable place to be for a lot of people to be in. I don't know if a tax, a speculator's tax, will actually slow the market down considerably. I know the government is looking at it. They're looking at the numbers to say, what makes sense? How many people are actually flipping? Once they have those numbers, then we can all make an educated decision, including the government that met today, that they were saying after the meeting was over, they need more analytics to be able to make that call to see how many of these properties are being flipped, are buying for vacancy, um, or just for rental properties as well. Reese, uh, in the Vancouver market, the effect of some of these taxes, what are you seeing now? Because it's been a number of months since they were brought in, the, the effect uh, on the ground. Well, the initial provincial tax on foreign buyers did have a bit of a hit on prices and significant reduction in, in sales at the high end.
But uh, this notion of speculative buying, I, I'm afraid, is much too narrowly construed. A young family buying two or five years before they ordinarily would have, really stretching their finances because they're afraid of missing out, this FOMO, a new acronym, fear of missing out, is part of a speculative cycle. Or someone thinking, well, I really should be selling my home. I need to downsize or move out of the region, but holding on to their home because they see prices rising. OK, they're decreasing the supply of listings. So again, that's speculative demand. We need to break that cycle. And I've uh, proposed two alternative or even complementary measures that go much further than we've seen in British Columbia and that I think are needed in both of these two metro areas. And what are those, just briefly? OK, the first one is a progressive surtax on the annual property tax that would have a certain exempt level and then would be at rising rates up to 3% on homes, say, more than $3 million, so be paid annually. And the homeowner could offset that by the amount of income taxes they paid in Canada. OK, so this uh, does not discriminate between foreign, domestic, uh, citizen or not. The other one is simply that we do not tax the capital gains on home appreciation if it's your principal residence. And I think this is a serious mistake. It's biasing uh, people's savings into over-investing in housing, over-investing in financial markets and business, which is hurting the growth of the economy and real wages. Even the U.S. taxes capital gains on homes sold um, with a $250,000 exemption amount. Other than that, it taxes them as capital gains. I think we need to do that for all homeowners with a significant exemption and uh, in this way address flippers, address those who are buying homes, doing minor renovation, and then reselling in short order. I think the rate of the capital gain tax, which I think could be applied quite nicely at the Ontario provincial level, right. should be very high within, within the first two years, maybe 50% of the gain, sliding down